No, don't say that because you'll I'll really freak out. Like you know I will. <laughs> Hello and welcome Stop to Stay. I, I have to. You don't have to. I have hold to that. pull the skin away from my wound. If it just have to do <laughs> geezer. Just, just fucking do this. Do this. Hello and welcome to Staying Relevant, the podcast with two best friends and brothers, Pete Wicks and Sam Thompson. Uh, we're here to brighten up your day and uh, and really make you chuckle. Not laugh, just chuckle. One of these. <laughs> now you can catch us every single Monday, wherever you get your podcast. You can also catch us wherever. Oh, I forgot your bit. No, oh, it's no, been no, a you, while. You carry on. Okay, carry well, on. you can also catch us on... Are you distracted on... by the blue tack? Yeah, I'm fiddling with blue tack. And, uh, yeah, you can catch us on, on for every Friday on YouTube for the visuals, or you can catch us all throughout the week with our best bits on social media, at Staying Relevant for Everything, and, of course, on Snapchat. I will be swearing. Um, if you don't like that, go f*** yourself. I'm also going to drink, and I, I don't really care whether you want me to or not. Just... <laughs> Judge me or don't judge me. Do you know why? It's, it's 11am received... and I have just been for a meeting and had a beer for breakfast. So it's going to be one of them days. We've received uh, loads of messages of people who are concerned for Pete. And uh, but he's fighting back. <laughs> he's like, I don't care whether you're concerned or not. I will be having a beer. This is a very special episode, so it's not going to follow the same format as our usual ones, which I'm sure you'll be happy to because you're probably bored of that shit. Um, and the reason this is a special episode is because this is a leaving do. <laughs> Sam Robert de Courcy Thompson Ooh. is off to try his hat at becoming king of the jungle. <laughs> I just cheered myself. <laughs> he will be fucking off to Australia. Uh, we hope you do very well because it will only benefit us. <laughs> um, so we've actually got some props for you. We're making this a leaving do. Oh, we actually? So here's hey! some props. Hey! Oh, I'm screaming. I've got to stop screaming. Okay, so get your little hat on. We know you like a hat. We've got you a kangaroo. Fuck yeah. <sighs> Fuck yeah, it's got corks on it. Got corks on it. This is a kangaroo. <sighs> Shit. <with you. laughs> Oh, we've, got... <laughs> Sorry, <I cannot. laughs> we've got flags. Oh, fuck me. A good eye, mate. We're off to the Aussie. Uh, no, you're going to Australia. Yeah. So what was that? We're off to the Aussie. Off to the Aussie. Yeah. Have you been to Australia before? Uh, I, yes, once actually, to do to the extra camp for I'm a Celeb. Wonderful, excellent. This episode, uh, you will already be over there. Oh, mate, come uh, on. Hopefully you're still in there. I don't. Uh, but we don't know. How do you think you're going to get on? Oh, I don't know, mate. I go through stages. Because there are times where I sit there in the shower, because I sit down in the shower. And, uh, um, for all of you that don't know, Sam has a trust fund. So, <laughs> yes, he has a bench in the shower. No, he doesn't have a bench uh, in the shower. It's he... next to the B day in bathroom one on the <laughs> East Wing. Um, because the other bathrooms and the other showers, of which there are four, they don't all have seats, but there is one that has a full picnic table. Uh, the <laughs> no, lot. That's true. Uh, th th it's 100% true. Sure. <laughs> Pete, stop it. <laughs> We've recorded videos in that shower and you asked me to take a seat. <laughs> we have. We have actually done that. That's a good point. <laughs> Pete, no, 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 I like it. Pete's hat is peaking. And I, <laughs> and I really like it. No, no. What have you taken it down for? It was it's good. It's annoying. Have I got to keep this on for the whole thing? Yeah, the, the corks do get catch you in the eyes. Yeah, it's fucking... Let's just put them up there. There are a couple of times where, where, um, where I, I thought, what I'm going to do without you in there... He's ripped the cork. He's fucking ripped the corks off. There you go. Just some pieces of string now. Yeah. Let's, let's carry on. I suppose we can actually now probably talk about uh, me and Pete have actually done because obviously Pete was one of the first people I told. Uh, he's my brother. I love him very much, and so yeah, it was uh, it was very exciting to uh, to to tell Pete, and he was actually happy for me as well. I thought he was going to be like, yeah, what do you want me to fucking do about it? But he was actually like, mate, that's amazing. So Pete was really sweet. And uh, he offered to take me to uh, do a little bit of a preparation course for it. So we went to Go Ape <laughs> together. Right, I'm just going to take this. So Sam loves to do his stupid videos. I do not. However, I cannot imagine Sam in the jungle. I'm going to be honest with you, um, because you're not going to be with your, your typical comforts. You're not going to have uh, the butler, Tina, oh, Zara, Parents Trust Fund, or anything like that. You're just going to be at one with, with nature. And I know that's not really your... I love nature. Your, yeah, Pete, well, I love nature. Yeah, I don't think you do. Get me in there. So I thought we'll try and go ape. I imagined it was going to be a fun day. <laughs> 
It wasn't. We bought the videographer. <laughs> we took the videographer. Uh, I'm just going to point out, it cost me £150 uh, for us to do it. Um, and we did the big one for the big boys, um, which meant that you just do it three times. <laughs> That's all it means. You go, you go around three times. <laughs> I... By the third time, Pete was so angry. He had an argument with the kid. <laughs> the, well, he was right up my ass, and I don't understand where his parents were, and I don't understand why the fuck he was... like. He was literally tapping me to move. At one point, he kicked me. Pete and got thought, kicked from behind while he was crawling through a, over a net. And this kid was about seven. Mate, it was the funniest thing. M me and the videographer, we were ahead, and you just hear... Fucking hell, just stop rushing me. This fucking kid. <laughs> okay, around. that's a lie. I wasn't No, it's shout not. Yes, you were. I didn't shout at the okay, child. Okay, fine. You said loudly, stop rushing me to a seven-year-old kid. What I said to you was, as I shouted out, why is the kid rushing me? Fine. He said to us, but very loudly, why is this kid rushing me? And the kid was, and he went, he's right on my ass. It was a, ah, this cork. It was a very, very fun day. Had a really good time. Well, let me t tell the full story, because that wasn't all I'd planned. <laughs> That wasn't all I'd planned for Sam. What I'd also planned was that I was going to take him camping for the evening. So Sam's not been camping before, so I said to him, these are the bits you need to get for camping. Um, you know what I mean? You need a, a, a tent and you need like a roll mat, sleeping bag, all that sort of stuff. Um, I already have a lot of that stuff. Um, so Where do you have it stored? It's in the garage. <laughs> he's got, he's so, got a camping section in the garage. Yeah, I've got a shelf that has all my camping stuff. Mate, and when I say camping shit... Mate, we were going camping. Well, well, let well, me explain. But so, he turned up. So, so, so I get to go ape, which was in Battersea Park. Um, and I've taken, I'm dressed like I'm going camping. And I've also taken a full camping kit. Like I've got waterproof bag, all my stuff in it. Trekking through the high street of Battersea Park. <laughs> and then get to go ape like I was about to, to do some sort of manoeuvre in the SAS. <laughs> um, Sam turned up. Wearing that. What did you have under underneath your outfit? Thermals. He bought thermals. Pete had genuinely thought that we were going to fucking Alaska and had bought thermals. He turned up to Go Ape, where there's screaming kids everywhere, going, ah, it's like a playground, right? He turned <laughs> up in thermals, hiking boots, a massive waterproof SAS duffel bag with a tent, with roll mat attached, a sleeping bag. Head torches. Head torches, and no, not a knife. And he had, um, a, and he had, uh, you laugh, you laugh when you say, No, not a knife, right? The only thing that Sam bought when I asked him to get all this stuff, he forgot the uh, sleeping bags, he forgot the roll mate, he forgot everything, but he did manage to get himself a tent, which I think may have been for spray tanning, um, and, and an axe. I bought myself an axe, so we went to go ape. With an axe. <laughs> Pete panicked so hard. He thought we were going to get arrested. Because I, I said got to him, like, well, that's out. a weapon. And he was, like, he was like, well, it's not a weapon, is it? And I was like, but it, it's an axe. Of course it's a fucking weapon. You can't just walk round Battersea with a fucking axe. It's like quite a big, sharp axe. But it's a, it's a piece of... If I had been, like, sort of, like, hustled by the police, by the cops, I would have been like, oh, it's a piece of camping equipment. Hustled by the police. Yeah, I, well, it was a piece of camping, and it actually had a safety thing on so it. So anyway, so the original thing was we were going to go ape, and we were going to put him through his paces there and all that sort of stuff. If you're going to go, go ape. Right. Now, I'll be honest with you, it was quite boring. <laughs> it wasn't that interesting. Not much happened. By the third time, Pete was so over it. <laughs> it was just really not that great. Didn't enjoy myself, but I thought at least I've got camping to look forward to because I like camping. Now, originally, we were going to go to Epping Forest, um, lovely place, and just pitch up the fucking tents. And, you know, we were going to, you know, see how Sam survives effectively. Um, after Go Ape, we went to the pub for lunch. And Sam told me he had no intention of camping. <laughs> So I'd been walking around all day with a full camping kit. <laughs> he had no intention. He said, well, I just imagined we were going to go to a park and then film the video and then go home. <laughs> I'd got my mum to look after the dogs. I'd planned on being away for the entire night and I'd bought an entire fucking camping kit with me, um, to which I was quite pissed off because I was quite looking for... Quite Livid. He was fuming. Then it changed to we were going to camp in Battersea Park. <laughs> But then Pete kept on using the word, but we're going to get moved on. I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> you said like, we're going to get moved on. Well, <laughs> sometimes if you are sleeping rough, you get moved on. Um, I don't know what that means. Trust me. Um, so then it turned out to, we went to Sam's and he put up a tent in his garden. <laughs> so I went to Sam's house. 
with full camping kit <laughs> in boots and he put up a tent in the garden. <laughs> I then was so pissed off at this point, I think I'd stopped speaking. You had. Then it changed to, let's go to the common across the road. Close enough to home. So we went to the common across the road. We were there for 20 minutes <laughs> in the middle of a field. Trains going past. <laughs> One point a dog came. No, we were in the outback, mate. We were in the fucking wilderness. Yeah, it wasn't good. I was home um, and back on my sofa and drunk by about half past ten. <laughs> my favourite part of it is when Pete had been silent for about five minutes in the common. And he goes, I haven't been this upset since my dad left me. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. And so I just sort of, the funny thing is, it's quite an intense thing, right? So he says that. <laughs> and me and the videographer just started laughing. Because he said it in such a, <laughs> such a quiet way. <laughs> and then I got my axe out and I was like, let's go and chop some firewood. And he, he got so angry. He took my axe and threw it across the common. And then and then and then and then went, we're not doing this anymore. He'd blow, he blew up. Basically, Pete has a full-blown camping like roll mat thing, but he you can blow it up. And so you, ha you have to like press it. It's an inflatable it. camp bed. It's an inflatable camp because bed. Because sometimes, it, listen, if you are sleeping on the ground, especially at this time of year, it's wet and it's cold and it's hard. So you need something to support your back. And so it didn't fit into my tent because I had got the cheapest tent because I didn't realise that we were going hardcore. No, he spent £200 on an axe and £15 on a tent. <laughs> 25 quid in a tent, actually. That's a lie. And it didn't fit in the tent, so you got annoyed about that. Uh, but I actually think a really successful day God awful. We'll never be planning anything again for Sam because he just takes everything for granted. It was trying to be in preparation for this, which is a big thing for him, and he um, he ruined it. it I didn't ruin it. It was the best video I think we've ever filmed in my life. I, when you watch it, it's a really good part. There's a part actually at Go 8 where Pete is walking across a, a high wire and I start wobbling the wire. <laughs> and he stops on the high wire and he looks at the videographer who's on the other side and goes... This fucker. He goes, this fucker. If he doesn't fucking stop it, he's going to get it. He's going to fucking get it. No, it's when I got to the other side and I went, well, he's going down. <laughs> no, and then he got to the other side and went, this fucker's going down. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so anyway, you will have seen all that crap. So that was me trying to prepare Sam for the jungle. What have you actually done to prepare? Fuck all. Absolutely nothing. I haven't even worn my boots in, yeah. I haven't even worn the boots in. <clears throat> yeah, you apparently you're meant to wear them in. You are supposed to wear them in, although you're not really doing much. You just sit around camp there, don't you? What mm. do you? How do you think you're going to actually get on? I, mean, I don't know. I, do you know what? We, to go back to your when you first asked it, I sit in my shower sometimes and I'm like... Is that preparation? Well, no, I just sort of sit there and I sometimes... Because, mate, you know this, Pete, and I suppose the listener will probably know this as well. This whole podcast about staying relevant. I dream of this shit. I've watched this show since I was like 10 years old with my parents. Like... I, it's, I've wanted to do this for years. And so, like, I sometimes sit there and I wonder, like, is it real? And then I'm like, oh, my God, it is real. Then I get scared because I'm like, oh, my God, I don't, like, I, I don't know how I'm going to be. And, like, you know, it's going to be weird and there's going to be spiders and shit and, like, other people. And, like, what if they don't like me? You know what I'm like, Pete. I don't... If people don't like me, I panic. Well, I can tell you now they won't. No, don't say that because I'll really freak out. Like, you know I will. I, I'm telling you now, I bear in mind that I have lived with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we're brothers. I have lived with Sam... <laughs> And for a I week. feel sorry for the people that are going to have to share a camp with him. <laughs> Genuinely, I feel sorry for him. I think you're going to need a friend in there <laughs> yeah. because otherwise you're going to struggle. Do you agree with that? <laughs> yeah. You're going to need a new bromance and a confidant. So how do you think, like genuinely, position-wise, what would you be happy with? Mate, I, do you know what? I said this. If I could get to Cyclone... Which is basically, uh, this is quite a big ask, by the way, because that's it's very near the end. Oh, you don't know what a cyclone is, do you? I've never seen it. Oh, like cyclone, sick! It's the best thing ever. It's where like you, you basically like do this course, basically, and like shit gets thrown at you and put on you. It's amazing. So is that near the end? Yeah, it's near the end. It's okay. just before the final. So arrogantly, you think you're going to get to near the end? No, because the final is the end. It's like a few days before that. So okay. if I, mate, this is best case. If I could get, because the reason I say that is that if you do Cyclone or you get as far as that, then you can turn around and be like, I've experienced the whole thing. Yeah, because that's what it's about. It's experiencing the whole thing. It's not getting in further with ITV and, and further in your career. <laughs> um, it's just about the Experience. I'm going to be honest with you, mate. There is definitely a part of me. No, 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 no. No, Pete, I'm actually going to... I'm 100% of you 
this is a career move I mean, and no, it's a fucking great no, one. It, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing one, but, mate, you can't say... Well, no, because you don't watch it, so you don't care. But, mate, I've watched this for years, mate. Anyway, so um, genuinely, I think you're going to do really well. I think you've got a very good chance of winning. I okay. think you will be a failure if you don't win. Oh, fuck off. Because no. it's all yours to lose. No, it's not, mate. You no, are, it's not. You are an incredible person, and I think if you're yourself, you're going to do really well. However, <laughs> what is worst case scenario? Worst case scenario is first out. Because <laughs> no one wants to be first out of anything. Yeah. Um... Worst case, yeah, that's worst case scenario. Because the the beauty of the jungle is that you get to spend a week in there before you get booted. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So um, you still get to like experience some of it before you get booted. But just out out of like pride, you don't want to be the first out. But then like, and then but then actually, to be fair, afterwards, I think it's quite often you get binned off. So like, it it's it could happen any anywhere between the first week and the third week. And in terms of, you've watched it, you know, you obviously know the name of the games and that, so you are obviously a, a big fan. I can't wait to go and see what the Dunny's actually like. The shitter. Right, got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, What is the... Oh, go and do the Telegraph. Yeah. What is the worst task they can make you do? What do they call and, it? By the way, we haven't spoken about Anna Deck. We'll get to that. Okay, all right. The worst task you could do? The worst task, I don't care. I'll do them all. I hate creepy crawlies. I hate, I'm not like, I, I'm quite a fussy eater, as you know, because when we lived together, I was eating potato smileys and, and, and chicken nuggets. <laughs> and chicken nuggets, which Pete very kindly made for me. They were vegan chicken nuggets, actually. Soy. Corn. Corn, sorry. And, uh, and so, like, I don't particularly like any of these things. But having said that, again, I just, I want to eat a camel cock. Right. What do you think? I hate creepy crawlies, though. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I didn't think I would. And actually, I uh, I went and got someone to put a cockroach in my arm recently. It's one of the scariest things I've ever experienced in my life. And I know it's just a cockroach. Sorry, can we just take a minute back there? Because we're all concentrating on the... Co why, why was... What do you mean a cockroach in your arm? Yeah, yeah. We had an animal handler. And uh, they put a snake on me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. When I said to you earlier on, have you prepared for this? Yeah. You have. Well, the radio, I don't know how much I can say, that's the only thing, but like, yeah. The, well, it'd be on, won't Yeah, it? I know, yeah, to be fair. So, so basically my work got me an animal handler and they were like, they were like, here you go, here's a snake. And they put the snake on mine. I, mate, I genuinely didn't think I was scared of any of this shit. I was like, yeah. I'll be fine. Dude, the moment I realised it's not the thing, it's the thing moving. Yeah. Mate, when it moves... It's fucking terrifying. They put a tranche on my hand. It didn't move. I was okay. They put a cockroach on my arm and it zoomed up my arm. I screamed. I screamed, mate. However, when you get in there and when you do these shows, and you'll know because you watch them all, um, and from, you know, when you've done Big Brother and other things, everyone normally takes up a role. So you normally have the matriarch. You normally have everyone's got a different fucking yeah. role. What do you think your role is going to be within the camp? Uh, I like to think... No, what do you think it's going to be? Not what you like to think, because what we like to think and what we <laughs> like to do uh, I think I'm going to be Campsite Thompson. Yeah. Campsite I don't think Thompson. you understood the question. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna I didn't ask you for a nickname. Campsite Thompson. What role do you think you're going to have? This, I, is, this is giving me casualty all over again. I think, I think, this I'm, is, I think I'm going to be the, the campsite guy. <laughs> and what does that... I don't understand what you're saying. I think I'm going to be like the guy who, when like, whoever goes off and does the trials to come back, I'll just be at the campsite, like, making sure... You'll all be at the campsite because <laughs> that's where you stay. Yeah, but I think I'll, I'll be the one, like, who... not like Basically, what I'm saying is I'm not going to be... I think the, you're going to be the thick one. I'm not going to be the alpha or anything like that. I just think I'm going to be the guy who's just getting people up for it. So you're you know? going to be the motivator? The motivator, yeah. Fuck me, that was different. I think I'm just going to be the guy at the campsite going, you go get it. Go get them stars. So you're going to be the motivator. Yeah. So let's let's role play because we like to role play. Oh my God, I love role play with you. So um, I'm about to go and do a Bush Tucker trial. You go fucking get it. Look me in the eye. Look me in the eye. You've got this. You've got this. You know what you're doing. You've been born for this moment. Right. 
mate, we're going to have fucking nicknames in there. How do you think the audience is going to perceive you? Because obviously oh. a lot of what you put out, you're in complete control of. Uh, it's been a while since you've done a show like this where you were at the power of the edit. You won't know what anyone is thinking back here. You are just going to be lost in the jungle being you, which I must say sounds dangerous to me. <laughs> So how do you think you're going to be perceived? I don't know. I'm really nervous about that. What is your game plan? Well, actually, funny enough, Pete said to me before, and, and I fully agree with him, is that you can't have a game plan because by day three, you're tired, you're hungry, there's no point. you just got to be yourself and hope that yourself is enough to sort of like make people even slightly like you. But then I said to him that you should probably try not to be yourself and that should be your game plan. <laughs> yeah, but that won't work. So I think just, just I think just, tr and I know you're going to be like, you're going to scoff at this, right? But genuinely try and enjoy it as much as possible. I'm not going to scoff at that because it's exactly what I told you. Genuinely, I think that's the only way you can do this. Just I want to enjoy the experience because I'm never going to get the chance to do it again. You're one of the most... Um... Lovely, happy... Uh, loving, caring, irritating, uh, but you overthink things. You I overthink do. I overthink more than everything. Anyone I know. Imagine me first night. Well, this is what I mean. Like, so you overthink everything. So, like, I can imagine you in there just worrying what people are thinking on the outside of you. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's the big. My biggest worry for you is that if you do that, you won't be yourself. Because the 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 other the flip side to that is that if you are yourself, I genuinely think you'll win. Like for me, you're king of the jungle already just for being there. So if you if you are yourself, <laughs> I think everyone will fall in love with you as much as I have and as much everyone in this room has. So all you have to do is be yourself and not worry about what other people are doing. On the plus side as well, um, uh, and I don't know if we can talk about this, but the way it normally works is you, you get to take your friends and family out. <laughs> So you get to take your friends and family out there and they can support you and do all that sort of stuff for when you get booted out. So obviously, you know, Zara's now a Strictly, your mum, your sister and all that. Um, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I pick Pete. <laughs> so when Sam told me about this uh, a little while ago, he said to me, and um, I want you to be there. I went, what? He said, when I come across the bridge, I want you to be there. And I said... Why? <laughs> yeah. the fuck. Why, why would I want to be there? Um, so you will be seeing a lot of me on social media supporting Sam. Um, from where? From Australia. He's going to us, baby! Come on! Um, of all the people, I feel quite sorry for his mum and all the other people that wanted to spend two weeks in Versace Hotel. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to be living it up <laughs> and having a wonderful time. So if you could stay in there as long as possible, that'd be great. Because yeah. uh, it's all expenses paid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's going to rack up quite the bar bill. Oh, fuck me, am I? Um, why the fuck am I going? Uh, because it, I see it as like getting married and you're like my best man. And I just... I know this sounds a little bit lame, but whatever. The fucking title of the podcast is staying relevant. I'll never get this chance again. I wouldn't even be near the, like being accepted to be on a show like that if it wasn't for you. And so I feel like you're my partner. We do everything together. And so if I'm going in there, you have to come there too. I see it differently. <laughs> I see it as, depending how he does... Sam's going to need someone to either talk him down from the ledge. <laughs> if he comes out before the final, I think it's going to be tough. I think this flight home will be tough. <laughs> to the point where Sam, this morning we had a meeting um, uh, pre-Sam going where he had to go to the doctors to pick up some Valium. I'm so nervous. <laughs> and if he wins... I imagine he's going to go wild. <laughs> Sam doesn't often go wild, but when he does go wild, he needs a chaperone. <laughs> so actually, I think I'm there for safety purposes. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with best man. It's who will put up with me, win or lose. <laughs> you know what? So, so that's why I'm As there. much as you said that, and it actually sounds so true, it's not as not true. Honestly... We are. We go everywhere together. We go fucking everywhere so together. Annoying. We're going global. Yeah. So this is it, mate. 
This is, this is, we, if I'm fucking going, you're coming with me. This is, um, it's one of the nicest and most insulting things Sam's ever said, um, which uh, a little while ago he said to me, don't worry, I won't leave you behind. I never, um, I never said that. it's potentially one of the most insulting things anyone has <laughs> said. But never also, said that. But also the context is very lovely. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> so I won't leave you, never leave a man behind. I've got to be honest with you, this is the most same relevant thing that has ever happened to... Um, well, to Sam, um, but annoyingly, it's the most relevant thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> I know someone going in the jungle. Um, and you're coming out. Uh, but even funnier than that is that one of my other best friends was queen of the jungle. Um, uh, actually, two of my very good friends have been queen of the jungle. I, so I feel like... Who's I, the other one? Uh, Giovanna Fletcher. Oh, yeah. Um, so two people I know very, very well um, who have done, obviously, fabulously in the jungle. I may be a good luck charm. Oh, my fuck. That's all I'm saying. Out of my friends that have, have kind of done it, they've all done very well. Don't let me down. Oh, no, don't, mate, because I'm actually re I'm fucking nervous. Do you know what? It was the weirdest thing today when I went to come and pick up my Valium. I, um, I, the, I walked in to the doctor's surgery. I walked into my local GP and they had lined up by like by the reception, but to be fair, I've been going there for like five years. Sam goes to the doctors. He's the, he's completely healthy. I would say weekly. Do you <laughs> no, pop in? Not weekly. I'm uh, uh, Sam. I'm, I swear to God, how many times in the past couple of weeks has he cancelled things because he had doctors, dentists, some sort of appointment with someone? My wisdom tooth is not just a, like that. That's a real. But we had to operation. go through all the appointments before the wisdom tooth. All the appointments before. Well, the kidneys the were in a bit of a problem state. Well, they're better now. Yeah, of course, because there was nothing wrong with you. <laughs> no, but we went through stages of that. Um, so anyway, yeah, you and your doctor's best friends, first name terms. So I went into the GP and... I'm surprised you didn't ask him to go out. <laughs> and they, and you know, it was the sweetest thing. The, um, they were like, we've just seen the news. Because I think it got leaked. And they were like, we've just seen the news. Like, you're going, like, we're so excited for you. We're going to, like, vote and all that kind of stuff. And I've never been so nervous before. When I left that, I went, fuck. Because, like, we've done... Most shows, to be fair, we did like we obviously main Chelsea Tower, we just let's go day in, but they're quite restricted to a niche audience of people. This is like a way bigger audience than I've ever been in front of or anything like that. And I walked out of that thing going, Oh, fuck. like I just try not to think about it. And I'm really fucking nervous now. Honestly, the worst thing you can do is overthink this. I, I know you are flying. Um, so after we record this podcast, Sam's actually flying tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> So that's going to be it. This is the last time we're going to see him. I did try and organise a leaving drink tonight, um, which Sam's cancelled because he's too nervous. Um, so that's I'm, actually true. <laughs> so I'm actually going on uh, leaving drinks for Sam uh, alone. Um, I'll be in the pub. Um, oh, shit. The biggest thing for, for me about you doing this show, uh, in my eyes, is, and I imagine this may be 50% of the reason why you're actually doing it, is this the only way that you can get access to Ant and Dick? Mate, I can't fucking wait. I'm going to be honest. When we sit there, I'm going to be like, you might not know me, but I know you. I, I imagine, well, because I, I don't, did the restraining order come through? <laughs> no. Because no after your order. performance at the NTAs, I can imagine they will remember the person screaming. Now, the only advice that I'm going to have for you, because it will be really bad, and I don't think it will go down with the audience because they love Ant and Dick, is get their names right. No, see, I'm, obviously that's Which not... one's Ant? Ants, the, the, the taller one. Yes. Dark hair. Yes. Geordie. Yeah. They're both Geordie, yeah. 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 So Ant's the taller one. Yeah. Dark yeah. hair. Yeah. Dex, the little smaller one. The little but you're Ant, I'm Deck, basically. That's how I know. Pete's a little bit more <laughs> Ant, and I'm a little bit more Deck. Um, how are you going to be around them? I can't fucking wait. I'm going to lose my shit. When I see Ant and Deck, I'm literally like, hey, we've met on the red carpet before, and your press guy got in between us. <laughs> and nearly tackled me to the ground. Do you think... I'm going to pitch us for everything as well. I was just well. about to say, how many times do you think you're going to mention staying relevant to oh, Ant and Dick? All the time. I'm going to say, me and my friend Pete... You're going to say, I want to be you? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. And I don't even care. I'm literally going to be like, me and Pete want to be you. I, 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 this is another thing that I, I would like to ask you, is that I know from your radio show and any other show that you do, and I get a lot of comments, that what you do is you spend a lot of time talking about me. Um, if you could refrain from doing that, 
whilst you're in the jungle. There's no way. It would be great. There's no way. Not every story <laughs> has to be about us. There's gonna be, you know, I already know. I already know that when I'm going to get it, I'm going to be like, oh my God. So basically, I was doing this thing with my friend Pete. And then the best, because what you got to do is you got to just like, I've already done this loads of times without Pete knowing. But like, whenever I meet anyone, I always go with my friend Pete, just so they, so it gives them a chance to go, oh, I know, I know Pete Wicks. I go, okay, great. And then I'm like, okay, sweet. In we go. And I tell them like every story we've ever had together. Yeah. You think I'm not going to be doing that around the fucking campfire? Well, you've got another thing coming. This is the issue I have is obviously that, you know, I, I, you, you kind of use me as your way in sometimes to to different things but obviously you're not going to know how you're coming across <sighs> so i would rather you not mention me <laughs> uh, and also the whole do you know who you'd like my friend pete yeah yeah yeah, yeah. stop doing that no no do you know what this i can't isn't about me samuel no see, to, no it is about best you foot forward you don't drag my foot there is there anything um that you specifically want to talk about right now because there's a couple of other little bits that I want to do, but is there anything you want to cover? No, I just want to basically say uh, that I genuinely believe that if we wouldn't be in the situation we, we're in, if we didn't have the podcast, if we didn't have the listener, and I'm doing it for you. I'm fucking doing it for you. We're doing it to stay relevant, baby. So, Come on. As you know, we love a plea. Um, and we oh, we are, should have done an ad. I'm Calm down. Oh, okay, yeah. As you know... <laughs> As you know, we love a plea on this show, all right? Well, when I say we love a plea, Sam loves a plea. However, I'm going to switch it up a little bit because I'm going to make a plea to you, <laughs> all right? Sam, um, reluctantly and annoyingly, is my best friend. Yay! This is one of the biggest things he's ever done, and I'm immensely proud of him. I want him to win, and I genuinely think he can win. But the only way that he can win is if you vote. So I will be doing as much as I can on social, so will everyone else around Sam, but ultimately it's down to you. If every single person listening to this votes for Sam at every opportunity, you're going to be listening to a podcast in the future with the king of the jungle, right? <laughs> Let's honestly make it happen because he deserves it more than anyone I know, and I'm very, very proud of you. Thank you. Vote, vote a little bit harder than you did for the podcast awards. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This is the bit I was going to get onto. Is that this is your second chance? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We didn't win last time. We asked of you to vote. Maybe. And this annoyingly, if Sam wins, the problem with the podcast uh, uh, um, podcast awards is that I was involved. So we'll actually work out who the favourite is. But please vote for Sam because you you fucked us around last time. <laughs> so it'd be good if you could do your fucking job. All right. Um, on another note, yeah. whilst this is all going on, because um, uh, you're obviously all here for the podcast, the podcast isn't stopping. Oh, no. We have some bankers, which yep. you, you would have seen, but I will also be doing the podcast solo. Hey! It's at this point we lose the majority of listeners. <laughs> Because it's just a drunk man on a pink sofa. They, but they seem to quite like that, to be um, fair. But we will have some some other guests and some other co-hosts who will be doing bits with us. Um, so make sure you keep listening to Stan Rhythm and keep rating, reviewing and all that crap because it'd be really embarrassing if we come back and we've lost all our numbers. Um, and then, you know, we're relying on the king of the jungle to... I know what's going to happen. I'm going to come back and... Because it happens now. I read all of the comments. Would be better without Sam but can get on board because of how good Pete is. No. That's just, that's literally, no, don't say no, that's what they say. So I know I'm going to come out and it's going to be like, thank God the screaming's gone and we just need Pete and Zara to host the fucking podcast now. Uh, no, it's not at all. This podcast wouldn't be the same without you um, and neither would life. Oh, Peter Wicks. You're very nice today. You are very um, nice. I think it's because I know I'm not going to see him for a month. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And as you can tell, it's made me happy. So, look, the, we, the last bit. Oh, fuck, okay, yeah, this, Sorry, before before we move on, is Sam's obviously known about this for a long time, as of I, as of a multiple um, people around Sam. You know, his management and Zara and all that sort of stuff. But you have to keep it really, really secret. So it's been a real struggle for for anyone to kind of mention what was going on. Now we just didn't talk about it unless it was just me and Sam in the room, as I imagine he did with most people. However, his management came up with a completely different. Uh, route because you know they couldn't let people know what was going on so they came up with a code name and it's one of the most pathetic things I've ever heard in my life and it just about sums up why Sam's management is Sam's management so Sam's management have been calling this 
it's well, Sam going into the jungle in emails and stuff because they want people to know Project Lion. <laughs> Now, I don't even know if you know this. I didn't That's know what that. it's been called. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest with you, nothing says Sam's with the right management more than that. Because the thought process for me of, oh, what can we call it? He's going in the jungle, 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 lion, lion. It's Australia. <laughs> He's not going to the Seren fucking Getty, is he? So I'm not entirely sure why it's been called Project Lion. How do you feel about that? I quite like it. But there you go. My favourite my favorite animal is a penguin. I thought they'd call me something shit. I'm happy with a lion. Project Lion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is what it's been called. Um, but yeah, this is it. You're off to the jungle. Fucking good luck. We love you. This is your leaving do. We've got kangaroos. Um, I'm so nervous. <laughs> we've got hats. Yeah, it's all good. Um, that's very sweet of you, Pete. Thank you very much. And I love you all very much. And I hope I do all of you proud. But this isn't just the jungle show. This is staying relevant. And as much as I love my leaving do, we do have a little something for you, Peter. Um, the listeners love you, as I'm sure we're all aware. Uh, you have reached icon status. I don't keep saying that. <laughs> no, don't take the hat off. Oh, it's out in my head. Yeah, but you come on. You've got a line across your forehead. <laughs> it's, it's quite tight. I've got quite a big canister, and that's fucking tight. Canister. I've got quite a big canister. <laughs> oh, that's kind of... That's okay, put it back on. No, put it on. It's honestly quite painful. Okay, fine. So, I've got a line across my head. Pete. It's really tight. P has reached icon status. People have started messaging in, just about you in general. We have had the amazing listener Lucy send us a photo. This is real, by the way. On my life, this is real. This isn't anything fake or anything like that. So Lucy sent us a photo. Can you guess what the photo is? You get one guess. I imagine it's me, is it? Doing something. Did I meet her? Got half right. She sent us a photo of a framed picture of Pete for sale. For sale? In the window. In the window? Of a charity shop. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Don't be so... Yeah. So what we do you have, mean? So we have... What do you mean? So we have... Oh, don't be so right, fucking we, ridiculous. Shut the fuck up and let me fly. What do you mean? Because we're not done. Window. So... Listen, Is it Lucy, listener Lucy. So had, someone's just printed off a picture of me and put it in a shop. No, room? no, not just that. Someone's framed a picture of you. Someone's printed off a photo, then framed it and put it on sale. At a charity shop. I, I can only imagine that this is, is... Is it less than a pound? List, listener Lucy, thank you so much for sending this in. Um, That's fucking We weird. don't have a photo of it, though. There's a reason we don't have a photo of it. Because we went to pick it up. <laughs> no, you didn't. We sent the team to Colchester. Can I just stop? No, we sent the team... To Colchester. Let me just point out for a minute, right? One of us is going to the biggest show on TV and the other one is buying his own pictures from a charity shop. We is sent, that a joke? We sent... Who, which one of you We went? sent Ed all the way... You sad little man. ...to Colchester to go and pick it up. Ed walks into the charity shop and goes, Hi there, I'm here to buy the photo Stop of Peter it. Wicks. Charity shop woman goes, Who the fuck is that? Ed then goes... Oh, it's not on the window anymore. Someone must have bought it. It's the guy who's got tattoos and shit. She went, oh, I thought it was the guy from Thor. From Thor? <laughs> from Thor. Thor? She went, I thought it was the guy from Thor. If I Chris known Hemsworth. It was, if I'd known it was Pete Wicks from Towie, I would have put the price up. <laughs> up, which really surprised everyone involved. It surprises me that there's a price for it. So, without further ado... We have all the way from a Colchester charity shop. That is fucking. <laughs> it's big as well. Peter James Wiggs. <laughs> now, for the listener who, who doesn't want to wait until the visuals come out, this is from Pete's calendar circa fucking 1947. Uh, he's got his top off. Jeans very low, man, hair, hair in a man bun, tattoos fully out, you're seeing on a car looking very sexy. My favourite thing about this is, not only that someone's framed it, a lovely black frame, they've taken the time over it, but secondly is the price. 
Oh, please tell me. Is it in the bargain bin? £2.99. <laughs> £2.99. Peter James Wicks, £2.99. So this is from us to you. This is now going to be... Fr oh, fuck me, the fucking mic. This is now going to be front and centre at the Staying Relevant studio. Ed, thank you so much for getting this. Thank you. We love you. Uh, Lucy from Colchester, thank you so much. Pete Wicks, you're worth three pounds. Yeah. Is, is this made up? No, on, on our I life. I don't fucking want On it. our life. This is from Listener Lucy in Colchester. That can't be real. Yeah, we've got the picture of it. In we've got the receipts, mate. God, I need to go back to the gym. It's in fucking good nick then. How the times have changed. So also, Pete, whilst you stare at your own body that is on sale for three pounds or two ninety nine, actually, it was hard to find. Because it wasn't any more in the shop window. Why would you put it in the window? In the no one place? had bought it. Well, of course not. So she had to fetch it from the back. Oh, my God. She had put it in the no-hoper pile. <laughs> Genuinely, it was in the back in the storeroom because no one had got it from the front window. Well, you had pride of place for a, apparently for a few weeks. No one gave a fuck. So you got booted to the storeroom. <laughs> So we had to rescue you from the cardboard boxes at the back as she thought you were Liam Hemsworth. Well, when are the he Chris Hemsworth? You should have left it out there. I just, I didn't need to see that. Or, like, I, I can't tell if this is a joke. It's absolutely not a joke. It's, it's one very of the real. weirdest things I've ever heard in my life. It's almost as weird as if you go on Amazon, you can buy Pete Wick's duvets, <laughs> right, and pillows and T-shirts, but they're not actual pictures of me, Right. It's someone has drawn a picture of me and then put it on a duvet and you'll know the one I mean. It's in black and white and my head is shaped like a triangle. It's the four... Have you seen it? It's the worst... I don't understand all this weird memorabilia and all this fucking crap that you get. It's meant to be that, that. In an actual shop window is wild. I have no memorabilia. What I really want to do with this now is because I don't think the story of the Been Pete it. Wicks frame... No, I don't think it's done. The mystery of the Pete Wicks charity shop... I now want to know... Stop calling it the Pete Wicks Charity Shop because it sounds like you've set up a shop for me. A foundation. Charity. I now want to know, first of all, who printed the photo, who framed it, took the care, it's a lovely varnished frame, who took the care to enlarge the photo, frame the photo... What and I want then, to know is who gave it away. And, and then fell out of love with it <laughs> to the point they gave it to a charity shop. Basically, I think someone has seen one of your antics somewhere and gone... Nah, he's not, he's not my icon anymore. I don't like him anymore. And they've given you away for £3. I mean, I'm happy with the price. But can whoever used to own this make yourself known? You probably live in Colchester. So please make yourself known and let us know what Pete did so that you fucking gave him to a charity shop after all of the, all of the, the, the time you took to do all of this. I, this is the weirdest thing. It's I a bit stained as well. It's one of the weirdest things that I, I, I think I've... I don't even know what to say. I love the way Pete is trying to um, sort of like hoodwink us into being like, three quid's a lot of money. No, but what I mean by that is... <laughs> I'll tell you what. I was expecting you to quid. say like 50p. I'm quite happy with that. I'm, that's inflated my ego a little bit, three quid. I'm over the moon with that because I wouldn't pay fuck all for it. You know it. what should inflate your ego? If someone's printed it out, enlarged it and fucking framed it. Yeah, that's 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 wild. I don't. Yeah, I don't even know. So staying relevant for both of us this week. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Pete Wicks is the king of charity work. You're forever on the charity hype, and I love it. If you're not walking up Mont Blanc, you you you're selling out charity shops. <laughs> you know, if you're not doing the dog stuff, you you you. I don't know, you're fucking three In the quid. back of a charity you're shop. You're in the back of a charity shop storeroom. <laughs> Round of applause, Pete Wick. <laughs> Both of us staying relevant this week. That is absolutely wild. So, this is a leaving do. This is the last time Sam is going to be sat with us for about a month now. Is that right? About yeah, because even if I get booted out first, I have to wait there. Yeah. <laughs> I, do I? Yeah. Oh, I fucking ain't staying out there if you're not even here. I can't I'm just gonna sit around with you. No, because we'll go on a little tour around Aussie. 
No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get a Winnebago. Well, anyway, this will be the last time that we're going to be kind of around each other for a month and same with everyone. Um, so we're going to take this opportunity to thank you all for listening uh, to Stay Relevant this week. Please help us help Sam. Do you want to do your outro? For the, for the last time in a while... Um, thank you for listening. for a long while if, if something terrible happens. <laughs> thank you for listening to this week's episode of Staying Relevant. It's been a really important episode and memorable one for all involved, I think. And especially Pete with his photo. And don't go anywhere, though, because next week we have another episode with a nemesis. This time it's mine. We got Roman Kemp on the fucking show! <laughs> Genuinely, Sam is living his best life right now. Roman Kemp on the podcast, living it up in the jungle. So, yeah, listen next week for that. You can follow us on Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, at Staying Relevant. Uh, comes out every Monday, every Friday. You've got the visuals, rate, review, subscribe, do all that crap. It helps us. And it will especially help me because Sam won't have time for this when he comes back from the jungle because he will be king of the jungle and probably set up his own podcast. So it will just be me. So I need you. None of that's true. I will still be here if you'll have me. Uh, I won't be king of the jungle, but I hope I do get far. And so, yeah, thank you so much. Remember, Snappy C. And on that note, keep your ears peeled because there might be some news dropping relatively soon. Do I know about that? What's dropping? And on that bombshell, I love you. We love you. See you later. This is a really important part now because otherwise I'm going to become Sam's tour manager. <laughs> like I'm literally, he's going to like he genuinely will be like king of the jungle, doing all this amazing stuff, and I'll just be like, oh, who's that guy that keeps following you around? <laughs> <laughs>